Hey everyone, this is Holmes from Home Story Books, and I am here today to share with you the queer reads that I found very disappointing. The first disappointing queer book is Black Wave by Michelle T. I'm working on a separate video for this, I'll get to it. A lot of people that I follow and whose tastes cross over with mine read and loved this. This is a book about San Francisco and LA in 1999 in a climate emergency. The main character is also Michelle, a queer woman and a writer. I don't like dystopia at all, so there's that. Also, this was a book that I was reading for a queer book club, and queer or not, every first book club book I've read, I've absolutely despised. I don't like to make any judgments based on authors or on characters themselves, but I feel like I'm kind of compelled to in this case. I found the character to be pedantic, pathetic, biased, codependent, hypocritical, and bizarre. I found that there was so much defensiveness, hypocrisy, and avoidance that the character herself, Michelle, was hard to stomach. I know that the point of her character was that she was supposed to be raw and real and unflinching, refusing to look away from many unpleasant parts of herself. She did remind me of myself a few times, which was alarming and often well-crafted. Her biases were supposed to remind us of our own as readers, and so we approved or disapproved of her biases, we would approve or disapprove of our own. But I just found those parts of the book so repetitive and exhausting. Also, her biases felt tired, overworked, and white as hell. There were many times in the book where she would refer to people on the street as crackheads, quote unquote, which I think just didn't feel very compassionate. And then she would go on to write about her and her friends obtaining drugs, but they weren't crackheads because crackheads did A, B, and C things, and she did A, B, and D things. I would have liked it so much more if it was satire. It felt like it was going there sometimes, but it wasn't. I feel like it could have been hilarious as satire, fresh, alive, and biting. I wanted it to be more like Carrie Fisher's work, which in a lot of ways is kind of similar. Carrie struggled with substance abuse and many of her books are fictionalized memoirs, much like Michelle's. In fact, while I was reading, I found myself wishing Carrie or anyone else had wrote this book. I wanted wit and dry humor and mischief, and instead I got a 30-year-old woman's angst, cheating, antics, and bullshit. It was narcissistic, pretentious, and awful to get through. I enjoyed the pieces about the gentrification of San Francisco, but then the author would say something about how the protagonist was an addict, but not really an addict, because if she was an addict, then she would be in the gutter and not just working in a bookstore like she was now. I understand that this and a lot of the other stuff was commentary on addiction and how we make excuses for and avoid truths, especially if it allows us to keep using substances, but I wasn't cheering for her at all. I liked the meta piece about Michelle, who in the book was a writer, writing about writing and writing about the end of the world, as Michelle, the actual author, was doing. That seems to be a lot of people's least favorite parts, but it's where I felt her point was the strongest. It was where the author was really able to make points like this would be an award-winning novel if it was a cis, white, heterosexual man who wrote it, but it wasn't going to be written by someone who was any of those things, and so then it wouldn't go anywhere. That was kind of compelling. Even the parts involving the queer community I really struggled with. I feel like I enjoyed those parts as well, but there were just little pieces that I kept running into and thinking about, and each time I thought about them, it would pull me out of my reading ex experience. There were also lots of scenes where the author or the character's biases would just trip us over in queer culture almost. In one scene, she's met someone she's really attracted to, she's not sure of the person's gender and doesn't want to know, then the person admits to having a husband, then they're both like, oh no, because they've discovered the person's gender. Like, no they haven't, this is San Francisco in the 90s. One of the most gay-friendly cities in the world. Lots of people refer to their partners as husbands, wives, or spouses with or without a marriage certificate. So I just don't understand how the character Michelle could be so heteronormative in that scene. There was another scene where Michelle says she's not allowed to have sex with men because she's not as butch. And even if she had sex with men, then it would just be, quote, heterosexual and slutty, unquote. There were also lots of references to the character of Michelle kissing underage characters, beginning relationships with underage or teenage characters. I believe one character is 19 and the other is 13, which is just like, what, what? I don't, like, I don't understand. There's one scene toward the end of the book where a character walks into Michelle's workplace with an 
an entire file on her having predicted her entire life. Michelle is confused. She asks the person how old they are. They say 13. They kiss Michelle. Michelle then pushes them away and says, you are 13. They reply with, quote, I am, and I'm also not. I'm really mature or something. Then later, they kiss again. What? I am confused. Why did this have to be in the book? Why was this book written at all? I felt I felt that way about most of the passages in this book. Quote, one girl was doing an art project in which she documented herself urinating on every SUV she encountered, unquote. I don't want to read any more about bloodied tampons, forgotten or smashed cockroaches, or the wafting scents of hamburgers. I am done. I still want to read one of her nonfiction books about Monantaro, but this felt like reading her diary and I should not be reading that. The next book I found disappointing is A Queer History of the United States by Michael Bronsky. I read this all except for I think two chapters for a research project which I am now in the process of completely reworking. This book is a non-fiction text about queer history in the United States from the beginning to present day. I took a lot of notes for this book and found it initially enjoyable. There's a chapter on the marketing agenda that was unexpectedly a delight, but as I read, I started to find a lot of contradictions, a lot of erasure, and a lot of points that just completely missed the mark for me. This book felt really white and very centered on the gender binary, so there was a lot of L and a lot of G, but not a lot of bisexual or trans content, if you get my meaning. There's a chapter towards the end where the author talks about James Dean, who was a known bisexual, but he doesn't use the term bisexual to refer to him, instead switching between straight and gay, and it's like, Michael, just relax, you can use the term bisexual or queer, it'll be okay, I promise you. I also don't believe the term asexual or anything approximate to it was ever used. At one point, Pronsky conflates the queer struggle with the struggle for equality amongst black people in the United States. He makes one or two interesting points, I suppose, but to conflate and compare the struggles is harmful and has already been done a thousand times over. He then goes on to elaborate that we shouldn't compare struggles, but like a lot of white male cis writers, he lacks the subtlety to break down the intersectionality of blackness and queerness in any meaningful way. He then makes a smart move and quotes Audre Lorde, and then leaves the quotation unattended. The more I think about this, the more it sours in my mouth, which is sad because it could have been really good, but often I wanted Bronsky to check his privilege and drop his pejorative views. Fascinating because he's been writing on queer issues for over 40 years, so you'd think this would be an excellent read, but it was not at all for me. Then we have Queer by Robert Kirby. This book I read for 150 pages and then I put it down. I did not pick it up again. I didn't even know if I want to talk about this book. I hate it so much. I'll link a video down below where I mention this book and that I was looking for a copy, but as it was part of a Kickstarter, copies of these books can be super expensive, so I ended up requesting it as an interlibrary loan, although it was a specific type of interlibrary loan where the librarians who worked in collections called six libraries across Canada and asked if they had the book and they ended up finding one in Ottawa and sending it to me. This was supposed to be a bunch of autobiographical memoir style comics in an anthology looking at the queer past, present and future. Instead, all of those stories were fixated on miserable or at least Maudelin storylines and uh, I'm not a fan of the art in many of these comics at all. My wife is an artist and when I showed her the inside, she cringed. A lot of these stories were just queer tragedy porn or mask leading coming out stories where the author confronts their bully in a supermarket and I've read enough of those types of stories. Also, some of them are so, so triggering and so upsetting. In one story, a young man escapes his toxic family to go live in a city and be an artist, except he ends up being sex trafficked, essentially, arrested, and then dying outside of the jail, and it's so callous and cold, and just like, what the fuck, there's no trigger warnings, the author doesn't seem to care about this character at all, it's so insensitive. If you are going to avoid any of these books, please avoid them all. But if you're curious about any of them, please just avoid this one. It's so, so, so poorly done. I'm so glad I didn't have to pay for it and waited four months for it to go right back to Ottawa.
Then we have The Joy of Gay Sex by Charles Sivestein and Felice Picano. I read this as part of my 20th Century Queer project, where I read 100 plus books written by queer or trans people in the 20th century. This is for the year 1977. I have a full review of this, which I will also leave down below. The introduction to this book was super interesting and fascinating. I loved learning about how this book was challenged and taken to court and revised and fought over and smuggled into different countries. It has its amusing parts. The illustrations were great, although very explicit, so I can't show you those. But overall, I did not like the tone of this book. The authors both lived through the AIDS crisis, and so the tone of this book, and keep in mind it's like 15 years old, it was really negative towards unsafe sex obviously because of the risks which were at the time a lot different than they are now but it was just really frustrating to see the authors bashing the reader for having engaged in unprotected sex if the reader is engaging in unprotected sex and reading a book about how to safely have gay sex then that seems like a positive step in the right direction in one part of the book the authors ask why people who live in small towns don't just quote move to the big cities like why do you think people don't move away from toxic environments, Charles and Felice, because they can't afford it, because they don't want to be isolated from the people who are safe in those communities, because queer people are everywhere, because queer people have a right to exist in any and every community. Jesus. There's also a whole sex with animals section that I fundamentally disagreed with to the deepest core of my being, which I won't talk about here because I don't feel comfortable doing so, but I do talk about it in my review. Parts of this book were funny or cheeky, but parts of it were tone deaf and dripping with privilege. Overall, I enjoyed this book for what it was, but it, if it's ever updated again, it really needs an update. Yeah, I just can't really agree with this book. I, yeah. Then we have The Female Man by Joanna Russ. This was also a part of my 20th century queer project. I buddy read this with a lovely group of people on Instagram. And if not for their encouragement and commiseration, I would not have finished it. I do have a full review of this, which I will link down below, along with another book I'll mention in this list. This is a hard sci-fi book where several characters, whose name all begin with J, begin to encroach on each other's worlds and different time periods. It frequently flips the narrator, sometimes in the middle of the chapter, and sometimes with the chapter referring to themselves in third person. It's a very feminist and intriguing premise where all of the characters who are remarkably similar, brought up by different contexts, can inspire each other and rally together against the patriarchy. Except the writing style was really not my vibe at all. It was really boring and in parts it was really dry and like simple. For a book that promised reimagined worlds, it was just really bland. The writing also felt really cold and cutting and I found I could not relate to any of the characters at all. For a feminist book that was all about divesting the gender binary, it was obsessed with the gender binary and really transphobic. Russ has since apologized for the transphobia, but that's kind of not really here or there because it's still shitty to read. I'm going to spoil a part of this book, but it is a transphobic part, so I do have a point with this spoiler. I'll indicate when the spoiler is done if you don't want that spoiled. The last 30 pages of this book refer to a world where Battle of the Sexes reigns. Men turn young men into women in order to have sex with them because having sex with each other is abhorrent. Cue 30 pages of Russ describing trans people, often referred to as changed and half-changed, completely by their genitals. If there's one thing I could live my life never seeing again, it's trans people being referred to by their genitals or having their genitals described in detail. So interesting because so many of the reviews of this book on Goodreads from people I follow are pretty positive and I am here like, did we read the same book? Beijing Comrades by Beijing Chongzi. This is a book about an arrogant and frankly abusive man, Han Dong, and his partner Lan Yu. The whole thing was published in secret on the dark web and then smuggled out of China. Parts of it were often rewritten as parts of it were discovered and deleted. This was another first queer book club read. It reads like fan fiction in that it focuses on the two characters almost exclusively and only their interactions. There's a ton of sex, all of which was fine and I enjoyed, but their main character is a fuckboy and an asshole, and I hate him. 
and every time he thought or said anything, I groaned so hard, he was so toxic and so unhealthy, and when the perspective flipped and shifted a little to Lan Yu, I was so relieved. Those passages were so interesting, but they vanished after like a chapter. Part of the reason why this book was so disappointing was because I so wanted to love this. This is one of the few gay novels written and set in China out there. However, this did introduce me to a few queer books like Crystal Boys by Pai Xian Yang, which is about a queer sex worker and his life in Taiwan. So if you want to read something like that, best to just read Crystal Boys instead. Then we have The Pants Project by Kat Clark. This is probably the least disappointing book of the bunch. It is about a trans character called Liv who lives with two moms and one brother. Liv also has a friend who sometimes uses a cane, so there's some disability representation in there as well. Liv goes to a school where they have to wear a uniform and that uniform involves a skirt, which causes them great amounts of gender dysphoria and distress. The plot of the book revolves around them challenging the dress code and coming out to their parents as trans. The disappointing part of this book was the writing for me. It was just a little too simple, too structured. Maybe I am not the right target audience, but I've always loved middle grade, so I was quite surprised when I didn't love this. My main issue was the characters were fairly flat and the formula for every single chapter was the same. Something would happen at school, then Liv would come home and recount the whole thing with their parents and it was like, okay. It just never got off the ground for me and reading it felt like a chore. I wrote in my Goodreads review that it was a little like chewing raw bread dough and I really stand by that. Could have been great, but it was not for me at all. The last book on this list is Queer, A Graphic History by Meg John Barker and Julia Scheel. The previous review I filmed for this was just too long and it made me miserable to edit, so I'm redoing it. This is a very dry graphic representation of queer theory more than queer history. It's pretty academic in its tone and not very cohesive. There are separate headings on each page discussing one or two items or people, but I struggled with continuity in the text. It felt like something I could have written myself. That's no disrespect to the authors, but I read Freud before and I know his basic theories. The two authors constantly talk about subjectivity without mentioning their own, deconstructing others' biases and not their own. They seem to champion academia while not really mentioning its pitfalls, with one single page limited to queer theory should be open to all. The first real mention of trans people, by the way, is on page 80 of 175, and the mention is, you might be wondering how trans people fit into this. We'll get back to this soon. And then I was like, wait a minute, this book is only 175 pages, they're just mentioning trans people in the text now? Some of the authors or thinkers before might have been trans, but then I started to take issue with how concepts and ideas were just lumped together. With asexuality, crip, or discussions around disabled people, and discussions around fat phobia, all lumped together on one page of, at the back of the book, I can't help but wonder if they could have done better. On page 83, which talks about disrupting binary, sexuality, and gender norms, the three people pictured are Miley Cyrus, Ruby Rose, and Kristen Stewart. I have nothing against these celebrities, but they are white celebrities who are all mostly queer or gender fluid, and it seems like a missed opportunity to celebrate trans or two-spirit people. I think the fact that this was a graphic history, in fact, didn't help because it was really easy for me to see when the authors would be like, well, we'll talk about this concept here, then we'll talk about non-binary, asexual people, and disabled people all on the same page. I wonder if it had been longer, if, it, if that would have helped it, so that at least asexual people got a page to themselves, but I don't know. I feel as though this is confirming some very deep-rooted neoliberal biases I've been trying very hard to get rid of, and after page 83, I got tired of this book. The rest of the pages were just a total chore. This is a shame because there were so many voices that I was interested in hearing from, Julia Serrano, Cordelia Fine, and so on, that were included in this theory book. That said, I did learn things and I wrote down a few names that I'd be interested in looking up. Because of this, I kept reading because I kept discovering new names of people who sounded interesting and have contributed a lot to queer theory. It felt like a bunch of mismatched infographics rather than a graphic novel. This might be 
a great book to some people and that's fine but it's not the book for me and really high hopes for this and it let me down really hard that's it that's all for my disappointing queer reads this was an exhausting video to write because i don't like complaining so much or remembering so many horrible reads but i wanted to do it anyway let's talk in the comments and commiserate below thanks for watching bye everyone